The combination of Google's official release and some fantastic work by the developers of Dahlia OS and with the help of an emulator, we're now able to go fully hands-on with Fuchsia OS in its early stages to try it out for ourselves. So here we go. Today's video is sponsored by NVIDIA GeForce Now, the cloud gaming platform that can effectively transform any laptop, desktop, Chromebook, smartphone or tablet into a gaming rig without needing to go out and build a PC from scratch. GeForce Now lets you access your existing game libraries from Steam, Epic Games and more, meaning you can enjoy some of your favourite titles seamlessly across all of your hardware. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about how GeForce Now can get you gaming on every device you own. Previously, efforts to use Fuchsia OS haven't exactly been a user-friendly task. We last gave you an extended glimpse of what was a very early Armadillo UI-based build of Fuchsia back in 2017. That project was cancelled in 2018, but since then, the wider Fuchsia project has actually grown and is now available on some original Nest Hub devices in the wild. Clearly, Google thinks that Fuchsia is ready for prime time. The Dahlia OS team are behind this project, and they have done an exceptional job of turning what would be a long-winded process into a slightly less arduous one. The portable Fuchsia emulator has helped us spend some hands-on time with an open source portion of Fuchsia without having to spend hours downloading and building, which is a great bonus. But there are some still some prerequisites here that we'd wager some of you out there won't have the patience to match. It's also important to note that there are some minimum requirements to get the Fuchsia emulator up and running on your machine. You'll need at least an Intel CPU made after 2010 if you do have a dedicated graphics card or a fourth generation Intel CPU with integrated graphics if not. 8GB of RAM is of course the baseline while you'll need to be running Ubuntu 20.04 or newer otherwise you might not even be able to launch this pre-packed emulator provided you follow the instructional steps. So you're probably asking yourself should I try Fuchsia OS's recent build for myself? Well honestly it is hard to suggest that you jump through the numerous hoops, although there aren't that many in the grand scheme of things, to get this very early build of Fuchsia OS running. It requires an active Linux build to actually run, and even then, unless you are inquisitive, it's probably not worth that effort required for the average tech fan out there. We also encountered plenty of issues attempting to use a virtual machine running on Windows when trying to get this working, making the entry level a little bit more difficult than it's probably worth. Even after a brief hands-on period, it's immediately clear to us that the developer tools that Google has offered up for Fuchsia might even be a little basic for the most ardent nerd out there. You can't actually do a great deal at this stage with the UUI emulator without a little extra digging. This is still the publicly available open source code of Fuchsia OS though. Even though it is ridiculously bare bones compared to what you're likely used to, it's still fully functional, which is pretty impressive to say the least. Warnings out of the way though, this is an OS that needs a lot of work to be considered usable by the vast majority of people out there. The only major bonuses that we can see is that you don't need to spend hours compiling a build just to test it out for yourself at home if you are one of the inquisitive types. But you're probably wondering what can or what you can't you do with Fuchsia OS in this current incarnation? Well, the short answer is not a lot. This emulator is a pre-built Fuchsia image that gives you a taste of the kind of things that can be done and there is no GUI to speak of. It's just a way to see some of the core features that are likely to be implemented. It's designed for developers to test their own apps in the right environment rather than providing anything properly user facing in simple terms. There is a fairly simple web browser that will allow you to open multiple tabs and even multiple instances of that browser. Plus there's a terminal window that can run side by side with the ability to adjust overall screen share within that viewport. You get access to a basic app launcher here too. There is also the option to ask questions, which we assume as you add modules and add-ons, you'll be able to quickly jump to these modules and add-ons yourself as you want or need. It's kind of like a rudimentary search. A system panel also allows you to manage the time, date, brightness, and see system information or system resources being used by Fuchsia OS. The terminal does, of course, let you run some terminal applications and internal applications, things like a basic calendar, but of course none of this will be easily accessible to the average person. Google clearly expects only seasoned Fuchsia team members and developers to know their way around to fully dive in and get properly hands-on here. The idea is 
clearly that if someone builds an app or wants to build an app for Fuchsia OS, they can show that it is capable. Google isn't necessarily trying to give that impression at this stage, but there is a potential for developers to build their own apps that will work on the platform. Documentation for Fuchsia OS also says that the platform supports Dart. That is the same language that is used for the Flutter framework for building applications. We're hoping that this will help developers out there get apps well under construction. Realistically, that's all there is to the Fuchsia OS emulator UI. It's bare bones, but there are some issues and this is again, a work in progress. So don't expect it to be completely flawless. That said, you're probably wondering what's next for Fuchsia OS. Well, the most obvious home at this stage for Fuchsia OS is in the smart home. Starting with some devices in the preview program, the Linux based Cast OS on the first generation Nest Hub is being replaced with Fuchsia. Armadillo UI was a look at a new interface option focused on experimental ways of thinking about apps. And after Armadillo UI was canceled in 2018, it probably would have been easy to suggest that Fuchsia on larger form factors was not going to be a possibility. However, it is still being designed with larger devices like desktops and laptops in mind. Google did not choose to debut Fuchsia though during its Google IO developer conference just a few short weeks ago. That suggests that Google is still not ready for the average developer to work with Fuchsia, something it's easy to gather after a short hands-on period with this emulator. Some of you are probably wondering though, could we see Fuchsia on smartphones and tablets? Well, if we do, I think it will be a very long time away, but it will be very interesting to say the least. Starting life as an OS to take care of IoT devices probably isn't a bad way to take your first steps. But with all that said, let us know if you'd welcome this move down in the comments section below and what you think so far from what you've just seen. Do we need another OS to deal with? As always though, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later. 9to5Google is sponsored by NVIDIA GeForce Now, which lets you play PC games completely free in the cloud across all of your devices. Or you can join the paid for subscription tier to get access to RTX graphics featuring the latest ray tracing technology longer gaming sessions and better overall performance. If you want to learn more, then head to the link in the description or check out NVIDIA's GeForce Now Thursdays, which celebrate and highlight the latest releases, news and all things cloud gaming each and every week. And thanks to NVIDIA for sponsoring 95 Google here on YouTube.